Praise God. Welcome once again to the online church. And we thank God, Jesus Christ is Lord. Hey, I hope you all got up uh, on time this morning. Now, you know you were supposed to set those clocks ahead uh, one hour last night. A lot of people forgot to do that. And uh, you're wondering, well, what time is it? And uh, your clock should say 11. It's uh, 13 minutes after 11. But your, yours might say 13 minutes after 10. You forgot to turn your clock up. But thanks be to God. We, we're going to have a good time in the online church today. And we just praise God that we can reach out to the sick and shut-ins, the incarcerated, those who cannot get out to church, those who forgot to set their clocks ahead an hour. We just praise God that we can bring the word of God to you and, and that as you hear the word of God, the Holy Spirit will quicken you. We just praise God that we worship the Lord together. We're going to start off. We want to, uh, to play a song by our friend from uh, London, Kentucky, and his name is Kevin Wilson. Let's hear a song from Kevin Wilson. You were listening to him earlier on uh, before I came on. So we want to hear a song by Kevin Wilson, and this song is called A Place to Forgive Me, A Place to Forgive Me by Kevin Wilson. Praise God. That's our friend Kevin Wilson from London, Kentucky, singing a song, A Place to Forgive Me. Praise God that you found a place to forgive me. Isn't that wonderful? You know, there are a lot of people who really don't realize that God has forgiven them. They don't realize that God is a forgiving God. There are people who go through <clears throat> their entire lives in condemnation. 
feeling lost and, and feeling that they have to prove themselves to everybody. And, and life becomes a drudgery for them. But uh, Kevin Wilson sings that song, Thank God that you have found a place to forgive me. In that song, he talks about on a hill where your blood ran down. You found a place to forgive me. So uh, whoever you are, whatever your situation is, you may be going through a lot of torment, a lot of turmoil today. Your friends may have deserted you. Your family may have kicked you to the curb. But praise God, there is one who loves you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. We're talking about Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. We talk about Jesus. And he promised he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He'll never leave us alone. And so what a mighty friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And if you're listening in today, whether by whether you're live with us today or whether you're listening by way of recording, there is no situation that God cannot bring you through. There is no temptation, no problem that, that has overtaken you that God cannot deliver you from. Just trust in the Lord. Oh, we know it's all not easy all the time there. I mean, sickness uh, is, is rampant throughout the nation today. A lot of people being affected by the coronavirus. A lot of people living in fear. A lot of people uh, are living in torment. But Jesus Christ is the answer. There is a cure. There's an anecdote for the coronavirus. There's a cure, ladies and gentlemen, for sin, sickness, and that cure is Jesus Christ. And when this nation and when the leaders and when you and I realize that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness, what a great day will come upon us, not only in this nation, but in other nations. The Lord is pleading with the nations. He's pleading with you today. He's saying, return to me. Turn to me. Turn from your sins. Come unto me, all ye that labor, Jesus said. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your soul. And so if you're going through difficulty and troubles seem like they're hitting you on every side, the storms of life are raging, put your trust in the Lord. The Bible says, I've never seen any man made ashamed who put his trust in in the Lord. And so uh, the, the solution is right there, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, the solution is surrender your life to Jesus. Call upon the name of Jesus. You may say, well, I go to church. I go to church every Sunday. And ladies and gentlemen, going to church is not the answer. You can go to church every Sunday and still be goofed up. But when you trust in the Lord, when you put your trust in the master's hands, when you ask Jesus Christ to save you, to be your Lord and Savior, your God and your King, when you trust him day by day, not just on Sunday, but every day of the week, 24-7, you will notice a change. And then you can join with so many of us who can say, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought. Since Jesus came into my soul, since Jesus came in, since Jesus came in, uh, uh, since Jesus came into my soul, I have joy, I have peace, I can see my way out of the tunnel, there's a light shining, uh, troubles won't last always, sickness won't always be here, there's a bright side somewhere don't you rest i mean we could just get happy and praise god melanie bias we can just get all kinds of happy just thinking about the goodness of jesus somebody even in their worship of god took pen in hand and said what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him what a mighty god we serve. Somebody else took pen in hand and said, I will never be the same again 
Oh, no. I will never be the same again. Oh, no. Since Jesus came in, new life has begun. I will never be the same again. Oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, when you start worshiping God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and even on Sunday, when you wake up praising God, when you think about, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. I mean, you can make yourself happy. You can flick your own big, you can put on your own light switch. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't need a choir to sing you happy. You don't need someone to preach you up. There's a, a gift inside of you. Paul said to young Timothy, stir up the gift that is in you. Well, what gift are you talking about, Pastor Carter? I'm talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who dwells in every believer. Every believer has the Holy Spirit inside of them, and we are to stir up the gift in us. Well, how can I stir up the gift in me? By worshiping God, by reading scriptures, by turning to God in prayer when troubles come, Get on knee bone station and call on the Lord. When the bill collectors harass you and torment you, you call on the name of the Lord. When people try to hurt you and harm you, you call upon the name of the Lord. You call on Jesus. Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You're brighter than the morning star, fairer, much fairer than the lilies that bloom by the wayside purer, much purer than gold. Well, Pastor Carter, I mean, that sounds crazy. I mean, people are going to think I'm crazy. Well, let them think you're crazy. You, we got to be crazy to believe Jesus because this world system and the thinking in this world system, the stinking thinking, thinking is contrary to the word of God. And so, the world says, well, this is our standard, but God has a different standard. His standard is holy. It's crazy to the carnal mind. It's crazy to, to people. But God wants you to get out of that mindset you're in. Get out of this thing you're in. You're in the world, but don't be of the world and start thinking the thoughts of Jesus. The Bible uh, urges us to let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. So when people say, oh, man, she's crazy, he's crazy, all they think about is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No, that's not crazy. That's normal according to God. I'm going to repeat that. No, that's not crazy. That's normal according to God. So let's get normal. Let's get normal. Let's look at God's normalcy. His normalcy is everything from Genesis to Revelation. Everything from Genesis to Revelation. So study the Word of God. Get under the uh, uh, teaching of an anointed teacher of God and study the Word of God. Also, learn how to pray. Learn how to pray. What is prayer? Prayer is talking with God and listening to God. Prayer is a two-way street. You talk to God and you listen to God. Prayer also means allowing the Holy Spirit inside of you to talk to God on your behalf. Yes, Romans 8, 26 through 28 says, Likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit makes groans and utterances that cannot be articulated. And But he who searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit prays in the perfect will of God. And so uh, that scripture also says, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. So look at, look at this prayer and praise and worship. And the Bible says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves one with another. There are a lot of you who, who have dropped out of church. You don't go to church anymore. And now that you don't go to church, you don't read your Bible. You don't pray. You're trusting in uh, uh, ABC News and CNN News. And you, some of you uh, are trying to get it on TBN Network, and it's not clicking. It just ain't working for you because you've turned your back against the Lord and the Word of God. 
The word of God, the word of God cautions us. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves with one another. We need the church. We need the brick and, brick and mortar church. We need places where we can assemble with like believers. But when you cannot, then run to the online church. Find an online church like this one, Back to Basics Ministries online church that preaches Christ Jesus. We preach the Bible, the Word of God, not man's thoughts, not political rhetoric. We preach the uh, saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ through the Word of God. And so assemble yourselves with the online church and, and stay there until God sends you uh, back to your place, your home church, or shows you another church where you can go. Trust in the Lord. We're talking, ladies and gentlemen, about being spirit-led and spirit-filled. When your Holy Ghost filled, the world will not understand you. Let's listen. I'm going to say that again. When you are Holy Ghost filled, the world will not understand you because you'll be doing stuff you don't even know why you're doing it. And then when your friends and your family look at you all oh, cockeyed, duh. Duh. What's the matter with Janie? What's the matter with Jeannie? What's the matter with Billy? What's the matter with Ronnie? What's the matter with Leroy? They are led by the Spirit of God. They are reading their scripture, and they are applying the scripture to their lives. They are praying. They are hearing the voice of God, and they are letting the Spirit of the Lord inside them lead them. That's what the church ought to be doing, ladies and gentlemen. We ought not to be dependent on on a Republican government or a Democratic government to lead us in our lifestyle because Jesus supersedes the Republicans. He supersedes the Democrats. Jesus is above all political parties, ladies and gentlemen. And so when you put your trust in a man, in a leader, or even with following certain pastors, you know why some people cannot grow in the church? Because they're following pastors and not Jesus. They're following pastors and not Jesus. Just this morning, I was reading online this news report coming out of England. Here's a pastor in England, ladies and gentlemen, who specialized in giving uh, some of his certain members in his church spiritual baths. Spiritual baths. In other words, he had them so psyched out, so deceived. Check this out, Melanie. Check this out, Jackie. He had them so deceived that they would come, uh, uh, go to a certain room in the church, and he would bathe them, bathe them in a bathtub, and then he would have sex with them. And he called, he told them they were getting spiritual cleansing with that bath. Well, you know what they did? They locked that sucker up for 20 years. They locked him up. For 20 years, they ought to put him under the jail, ladies and gentlemen, because he deceived a lot of people. He impregnated a lot of young ladies and, 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 and paid for their abortions. And guess what happened to his wife? Because she knew what was going on, ladies and gentlemen. She got 11 years in prison for, a bait, for abetting and aiding this criminal activity. Ladies and gentlemen, when you put your trust in following a spiritual leader, when you put your trust in following a president, when you put your trust in following a, a senator, when you put your trust in following a governor, when you put more trust in a person than you do with G Jesus Christ, you're in trouble. And so I caution you, even in the church, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible teaches us in, in the book of Corinthians. Paul said, I'm glad I'm not like any of you. For some of you say you're followers of Apollos. Some of you are followers of Paul. Some of you follow this person. He said, but I follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's fine-tune our lives, our, our worship, our praise, and let us make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that Jesus Christ is Lord of our lives. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to preach to them on a, a message entitled, Choose You This Day. You may say, well, Pastor God, you've been preaching already for 15 minutes. Well, that was just warm up. That was just warm up. Praise God. That was just warm up. We're going to ask Melanie Bias, our sister from Gray, Georgia, if she would come right now and lead us in prayer. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. 
Thank you for that uh, praise and worship is what I call it, Pastor. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, um, let us pray. Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. We're grateful and so blessed that you've made us a part of your family and called us to be followers of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for all the blessings. Sometimes we don't appreciate some of the lessons, but we know you'd make no mistakes and you have always have it under control and in your hands. We're looking forward to all the blessings that are to come and with with grace and praise. And thank you for sacrificing and sending your son, Jesus Christ, as our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Melanie. We, pre- we appreciate you very much and love you and thank God for you. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, open your Bibles, will you please, to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. We're going to look at Elijah. What a mighty man of God. Elijah, the mighty man of God. And uh, the Bible teaches us that Elijah was a man of like passions that we have. He was just like us. If you want to know what Elijah was like, Look at yourself in the mirror. He was just like you, just like me. He had his strengths and his weaknesses. He had his times of fear and apprehension. We're going to look at chapter 18 of Elijah, and uh, starting with verse 15. And we're going to uh, take a look at our subject that uh, is called Choose You This Day. Choose You This Day. Praise God. Before we go further forward, we want to thank God for our sister church, our new church in uh, Kasumo, Kasumo, Kenya. And uh, they're giving out free food to the hungry today. We saw the bags of food that they have. They purchased free food for the hungry. That's in Kasumo, Kenya. Elijah, you all keep on doing the great work. This week they're going to be plastering the new building inside and outside. So we just praise God and thank God for all of our listeners for your tithes and offerings to help bring this new church into existence in Kenya. Okay, the scriptures for the next several minutes we're going to look at choose you this day. The scripture says in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse, starting with verse 15, And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And Elijah answered, I have not troubled Israel. But thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal 450, and the prophets of the groves 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about choose you today whom you will serve. Elijah pops up in Scripture in 1 Kings chapter 17. Elisha the Tishbite from a place called Tishbe in northern Israel. And God brought him on the scene, and the very first thing God told Elijah to do was go and find King Ahab. Go and tell this wicked king that it is not going to rain for three and a half years. And that was Elijah's first assignment. That's a tough assignment, ladies and gentlemen, to go to a wicked king and declare because of your sins and the sins of this nation there will not be rain for three and a half years. I wonder how many of you could, could do that if the Lord said, go to President Trump and tell him it's not going to rain for three and a half years because of your sins and because of, because of your turning your back to the Lord. 
and 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 a lot of people will say, well, God wouldn't say that to Trump because Trump's a Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get this thing together. God can God can put a jackass in the White House if he wants to and lead this nation by a jackass. Okay. God allows people to come into office so that God's will will be done. Look, beyond the things happening in this nation, God's got a plan for this nation. He is not pleased with America. God is not pleased with the fact that we have formed our own kind of religion and we call it American Christianity. Ladies and gentlemen, when when we look at what American Christians believe, it is far removed from what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 16 to 18 at Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus said, on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So there are a lot of people in this nation. They have been deceived, ladies and gentlemen, the spirit of deception. And, and, and God warns us in Romans chapter 1, he says, if you continue to believe the lie, if you continue to believe deception, I will send strong delusion. I'll send strong delusion. He said, I will, I will, I will, I will. Uh, confound the entire nation. That's what he said in Romans. If if you continue to believe the lies, then I'll send a spirit of strong delusion. In other words, when he if he sends a spirit of strong delusion, a lot of folks will not survive, ladies and gentlemen. And we're about at that place right now in this nation. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to be quick. I'm not going to judge the president. I'm not going to judge the leaders. But, but just because a person is in office does not mean that that person is holy. The Bible has not changed, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture says test the spirit by the spirit. And so a lot of you all out there running around, yeah, the president is saved, you know, and then what he says we do. And, and this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not one of them. I'm not going to uh, follow and, and do everything uh, that that the president says, the Bible says that we ought to obey those who have the rule over us. But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible also says, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar, and unto God that which is God. And anything that's not holy, ladies and gentlemen, you and, not, you and I are not to be participants in it. Anything that's said by a political leader that is unjust and unholy. You and I not, ought not to be repeating it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, anything that's bashing someone and putting them down and humiliating them is not of the Lord. Even though your leaders may be doing this, we are Christians. We are to be Christ-like. We are to be led by the Holy Spirit. We ought to walk in love. We ought to walk in faith. I know I can get an amen out there somewhere. We ought to follow Lord Jesus, the Bible says, be ye followers of me. And so God might raise up somebody, somebody bold. I mean, not someone who's going to kiss up and, 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 and go to the White House just to get that paycheck or, or get that envelope that's going to be put in their hand. No, someone who's going to be bold and courageous and will stand up for righteousness and holiness, even if it means death, ladies and gentlemen. And so God called Elijah the Tishbite. He was just uh, uh, having a normal life in Tishbe, and God put his hand on him. And when God puts his hand on you, ladies and gentlemen, your family can't even understand it. Your friends won't even understand it. Your spouse won't even understand you. When God puts his hands on you, somebody wrote years ago, I know the Lord, I know the Lord. I know the Lord has put his hands on me. Ryan Trogler, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord has laid his hands on me. And when God lays his hands on you, your family won't even understand you, Ryan. Your friends won't even understand you. They will look at you cockeyed. They will walk around your, your street. They will, when they get to your house, they'll cross over. They won't even want to walk in front of your house. Hey, man, that guy's crazy, man. Something weird about that guy, man. All he does is talk about Jesus. All he knows is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Well, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord has laid his hands on me. And when God lays his hands on you, 
You've got to do what God says do. And if you rebel, if you resist, it's worse on you than others when you resist the Holy Spirit, when you rebel against God. And so I know I'm talking to somebody out there because God has laid his hands on you, and you're trying to uh, uh, get, get, get this thing off your back that's on you because you want to still keep your friends and keep, you know, keep your friendship with your, your local church or keep your, your fellowship or your, uh, stay in the club that you're in, but they're looking at you cockeyed because you don't fit. You don't fit. Some of you are like a, a triangular peg trying to fit yourself into a, a, a diamond-shaped hole or a circular hole. You're, you're like trying to put a, 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 a a, a, a diamond-shaped wedge into a circular hole, and it won't fit. And you're, you're trying to make yourself fit. You just don't fit anymore. Why? Because you've been picked out by Jesus, like Elijah, the, the Tishbite. God went to Tishbe and plucked up Elijah and said, Go to Ahab. And tell Ahab it will not rain for three and a half years because you have sinned against me and you have caused my people to sin. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had a president leading us, and, 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 and God chose that president. I believe God chose that president to bring this nation to its knees. But most of the nation has no clue what God is doing because most of the nation has chosen to, to, to worship a man instead of worshiping God. And it's been almost three and a half years under this leadership, ladies and gentlemen, and American Christianity is at an all-time low, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because people have chosen to follow after political leaders. They have chosen this. And, and American Christians have allowed themselves to sink so low as to begin hating Mexicans, hating people of color, hating people whose sexual uh, persuasion is different from theirs, hating people because of economics, hating people because of their lifestyles, hating people because of who they are, hating people of, because of their ethnicity, hating people because of their nationality. Now they're hating people because of the churches they attend. And so American Christians have allowed themselves to sink very, very low. Why? Because we have taken our eyes off Jesus. Isaiah said in the 26th chapter, the third verse, he said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts thee. And so we've got a long way, ladies and gentlemen, to get back up to where we are. But the, the kicker is, many American Christians think they're safe. We're in the safety zone. We're safe because, you know, the president goes to church and the president says this and the vice president says this and this and that and, 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 and Reverend so-and-so says this and prophet so-and-so says this and we follow prophet so-and-so and the prophet so-and-so is, 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 has good contacts with the Republican Party or the Democratic Party and Americans have been deceived, ladies and gentlemen. Now I know if Americans have been deceived, look at the rest of the world, how corrupt the rest of the world is, because much of the rest of the world tries to duplicate what's going on in America. You you go to Africa, you see churches that are American clones. They have cloned the worship service, the worship style and everything. And so, ladies and gentlemen, there's a time to pay attention to God and hear the voice of God and and I caution you to seek the Lord with all your heart. Now I know there are people who don't like this kind of preaching. They hate this kind of preaching. I know some of you bishops out there, you've been controlling people for so long. You've been controlling your pastors. You don't want them to be free. You want them to keep on promoting your dead programs and your dead ideology. But it's time for people to wake up and call upon the name of the Lord. Because if we don't wake up and call upon the name of the Lord and believe the report of the Lord, we will one day discover that America will be a byword. Just like Jerusalem became a byword. And people will pass the great city of Jerusalem and they say, what happened to this city? It's been leveled. 
it looks like a, a shipwreck. It looks like a tornado came through. Why? Because the people took their eyes off the Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, that can happen in America. That can happen in Atlanta, Georgia. That can happen in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. New York City. That can happen, happen in, in, in your nation. Because the people have chosen to follow leaders rather than Jesus. And the people have chosen to follow their own proclivities. That's a, a, a big word I use every now and then. They follow their own inclinations, their own intuitions, their own lusts, their own desires, rather than to stick with the word of God. And so God every now and then has to call upon somebody like Elijah. And don't be surprised if God calls on you. And, and you'll know God has called you, ladies and gentlemen. How do you know? Because your neighbors will start looking at you cockeyed. Your families will start staying away from you. They won't be inviting you to dinner anymore. They'll only call you when they need something. Your friends will kick you to the curb. They will scandalize your name. Some of you are in that state already. And, and, and you feel all, all alone and, all, and ashamed of yourself. But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that if anyone, anyone will follow after me, Jesus said they must suffer persecution. And so if you're going through persecution, you just hold on. Like the songwriter said, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. And so Elijah went to Ahab and told Ahab, it's not going to rain for three and a half years. And Ahab, uh, uh, then Elijah split the scene. And then over the next three and a half years, Israel dried up. We're talking about the northern kingdom. We're talking about the northern kingdom, the ten tribes called Samaria or Ephraim or Israel dried up. And so uh, uh, the sheep were dying, the goats were dying, the oxen were dying, people were dying, uh, couldn't get water, crops failed, there was a famine in the land, and Ahab was mad as can be. Thought I was going to say something else. Didn't Ahab was angry, and, 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 and uh, if Ahab was angry, his wife Jezebel was angrier. Ahab was married to a cutthroat witch, witch named Jezebel. And so uh, God told Elijah to go to a certain brook and, and stay there and, and, and reside there, go to this area. And, and every now and then pastors need a retreat area. They need a place where they can go and get some rest and recuperation and healing and wait on the Lord for the next step. And we're going to be talking about that much in the near future. Why pastors need to find a place of rest, a place where they can get healed, where they can be strengthened. And the Bible says that even though there was a famine in the land and, and uh, the, the, the water was scarce, the ravens brought Elijah food every morning and every night, brought him bread and meat. The ravens, the birds flew, and he, food was airlifted to Elijah. That's how God would take care of you, ladies and gentlemen, when you put your trust in the Lord. That's how God would take care of you when the bill collectors uh, uh, put a padlock on your door, take your car, uh, close your bank account, uh, uh, take money out of your paycheck. God will provide for you. Don't give up. Don't quit. When your family deserts you, your friends leave you, don't quit. Don't give up on God. God will provide for you. And so after three and a half years, then God sent Elijah back to Ahab. And that's where we pick it up in uh, verse 15, verses 15 and 16. Uh, verse 14 of First uh, Kings 18, And now thou sayest, Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he shall slay thee. So Obadiah meets Elijah on the way. And Elijah talks with Obadiah, who was, Obadiah was a believer who was under the 
the service of the of Ahab's administration. And praise God, God has some believers in the present administration, people who will hear the word of God. And, 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 and hopefully our leaders will listen to God's planted people in, in the administration. And so Ahab, uh, Ahab's servant Obadiah meets with Elijah, and Elijah uh, says, uh, go find Ahab and tell him Elijah is here. Uh, that I want to meet with him. I want to have a meeting with him. And then Obadiah says, oh, whoa, 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 Elijah. Now you know and I know you can pull some disappearing acts. You can say I'll be at a certain place and the king will come looking for you and the Holy Spirit will move you to another place. He said, now this happens and I tell Ahab you're here and you're waiting to have a meeting with him. And, and the Holy Spirit moves you there, then I'm going to die. That's what Obad, Obadiah told Elijah. And Elijah said, no, you tell Ahab to meet me at Mount Carmel. Meet me at Mount Carmel and tell him to bring all Israel with him. And bring the, the, the 400 prophets of Baal and the 450 prophets of, of, of the groves. Okay, bring uh, Jezebel's prophets. And bring your prophets in, and bring the Republicans with you. And bring the Democrats with you. And, and, and bring the, the Speaker of the House. And, and, and bring the uh, uh, President uh, temp, uh, Pro Tem of the Senate. And bring the Vice President with you. And, and bring them all with you to, Mount, to uh, uh, Mount Carmel. Bring your religious leaders with you. And, 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 and I want to meet with Ahab on Mount Carmel. And, ladies, and also bring two, two animals so that you sacrifice one unto your God and I'll sacrifice one unto my God. And the God who speaks with fire, that is God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Ahab heard that word and, and Ahab can't wait to get his hands on Elijah because he's been suffering. He hates Elijah. He's been trying to kill him for three and a half years. He sent out hit squads all over the world to find him. He couldn't find him. And so he's looking for the day where he meets with Elijah on Mount Carmel. And, and Ahab calls all of Israel, gather at the foot of Mount Carmel. And then he tells all of his prophets, all of his advisors, all of his witches, all of his soothsayers, and, and, and all of his wives, advisors, and witches, and soothsayers, and he gathers them. And, 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 and uh, it's just like, just like gathering all the Republican leaders and all the Democratic leaders and get them all because they all think they're right. And, uh, and most have turned their eyes from God. Gather them, and we're going to have this thing out. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get it on at Mount Carmel. And so Elijah met Ahab at Mount Carmel. And Elijah says, okay, uh, you, you set up your altar and you get your prophets to slay the, the animal and, put, and make a sacrifice, but uh, do not put any fire under the altar. You see, in those days, the false religions would set up altars and they would dig a tunnel under the altar and put fake fire false uh, false fire under the altar and 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 burn up their sacrifice and they would deceive the people into thinking that they were that they were bringing fire uh, on their altar and ladies and gentlemen we've got so much false fire in our churches today we've got so much false information we've got so many phony fake prophets We've got fake messages. We've got uh, prophet so-and-so saying this and prophet so-and-so saying that. And the people have been deceived. Why? Because the people have turned their eyes off of God and their eyes are on people. I know that's tight, but it's right. And so Elijah said to Ahab and his prophets, you, you, you go first. You call on your God, and, 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 and hopefully your God will bring some fire down on the, and, and consume, the, consume the sacrifice. And so they cut the, the meat on, put it on the altar, and, and, and those prophets cried from morning to noonday. 
and they they cut themselves. They call on the name of Baal. They called on Ashtoreth. They called on all of their gods, but there was no fire. And then Elijah said to them at one point, uh, uh, cry a little louder. Make more noise. And make more noise. Uh, perhaps your God is asleep. Perhaps he's on vacation. Perhaps he's taking a coffee break. Perhaps he uh, uh, has, has to go to the bathroom. Uh, call. Make a little bit noise. More noise. And that's how it is in many of our churches. Make noise. Make noise. Hey, making noise ain't, ain't pleasing God, ladies and gentlemen. Making noise ain't holy. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. And so after several hours of crying and screaming and making noise and, and creating havoc on Mount Carmel, Elijah says, okay, time's up. My turn. And so Elijah had his servants dig a, a, a trench couple feet deep and he took he chose 12 stones and he built an altar with 12 stones each stone representing the 12 uh, uh, tribes each stone representing a tribe of Israel and then Elijah had his servants cut up the, the bullock put him on the altar and then Elijah said now take four buckets fill them with water Pour them on the sacrifice, on the meat. Get four more buckets. Pour them on the bricks, the stones. And, and then, then go get four more buckets of water and pour it on everything. Just drench the whole place with water. But put no fire under it. And then Elijah, ladies and gentlemen, in the presence of all of Israel, in the presence of the 450 prophets of the groves, meaning Jezebel's prophets, and the 400 prophets of Baal, and all the political leaders, and all the people who had turned their backs against God because they were worshiping the king. Elijah, the Tishbite, said unto the people, verse 21, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him but if Baal then follow him and the people answered him not a word and then Elijah said in verse 25 choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it he did that and then after he finished mocking Ahab and his prophets verse 30 Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. He repaired the altar, took the twelve stones, set up the altar in the name of the Lord, made a trench about the altar, put the wood in order, poured water on it three different times, and then he said, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Powerful verse, verse 37 of chapter 18. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned the heart back again. Verse 38, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Verse 39, And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. It was at that point, ladies and gentlemen, that Israel realized they had sinned against God, and their eyes were open, and they repented. And then verse 40, And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Next thing you know, Elijah says to Ahab, get thee up, Ahab. 
eat and drink, for there's a sound of the abundance of rain. The sound of the abundance of rain. Next thing we know, Elijah saying to his prophet as he prays, Elijah gets down on his knees and prays and puts his head between his knees and every now and then looks up and says to his uh, servant, go and look at the, the, over the ocean. Tell me what you see. And, the, pro and the, the servant kept coming back six times. I don't see anything. Go one more time. And on the seventh time, the servant ran back to Elijah and said, I see a cloud coming up over the water. It's in the shape of a man's hand. And uh, Elijah said, it's going to rain. He says to, Eli to Ahab, get thee up. Prepare your chariot. And, 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 and get off this mountain. Don't let the rain stop you. Verse 45, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Ahab was riding in his chariot. Verse 46, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Ladies and gentlemen, it had not rained for three and a half years. But when God consumed the, the, the sacrifice on the altar constructed by his manservant, Elijah, God then sent the rain. Ahab got in his chariot. He was making it down off the mountain, heading for the city of Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. Elijah girded up his loins and started running. Ryan Trogler, he was running. He was going down the highway, Ryan. And he passed the chariot of Ahab. He was booking. He was booking, man. He was booking. He passed the chariot of Ahab. Can you imagine this old man outrunning a chariot? Ladies and gentlemen, you can outrun the king's chariot as you put your trust in the Lord. People might beat you down now. You might feel like you're all alone. You might feel like you're deserted. You might feel like America's gone uh, 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 to the trenches. But you keep on trusting in the Lord. You keep on worshiping God, not only in America, but whatever nation you're in. You be faithful to God, and God will be faithful to you. God will cause your enemies to be your footstool. He will put an anointing on you. He'll put such an anointing on you that you'll outrun the king's chariot. You'll pass the king's limousine on your way to the city. The Bible says, the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You might be sick today. Your body might have a disease. The doctor may have given you a bad report. You may have lost a loved one. Your family may be in grief. You may be going through financial difficulties. You may not know where your next meal is coming from, but you trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that makes the Lord his trust and respects not the proud, but such as turn aside to lies. I say to you, Choose you this day whom you will serve. Joshua had to make that decision. In his day, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Habakkuk had to make that decision. In his day, he said, I will stand upon my watchtower, and I will watch and see what the Lord will say to me when I'm reproved. And Elijah stood on Mount Carmel. And he challenged the people, choose you this day. Whom will you serve? And I challenged the American people. I challenged the people in England, Canada, France, Germany, China, Russia, Afghanistan, Afghanistan, Nigeria, Kenya, Brazil, uh, 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 Colombia, all the nations. I challenge you, whom will you serve? If God be God, then serve him. Trust him. Trust him with all your heart. Don't turn away from him. 
Don't turn from the living God. I challenge those of you who have backslidden. You've turned your back to God. Return to the Lord. Repent. 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 I challenge you, those of you who, who have chosen the homosexual lifestyle. Uh, God hates sodomy. Repent. 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 Return unto the Lord. God will deliver you. He will hear your cry. I challenge those of you who have uh, slept with the enemy uh, in the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. You've given up your value principles. You've given up your life with Jesus to sleep with the Republican leaders, to sleep with the Democratic leaders. I challenge you to repent. Get up and return to the Lord God and watch what God will do. Ladies and gentlemen, I dare you, I double dog dare any two Christians in this nation to touch and agree that God will halt this coronavirus epidemic. I dare any two of you to touch and agree upon asking God to halt this plague. I dare any two Christians to try God, to trust God. The Bible says, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And if any two of you ask anything in my name believing, that will I do. God can halt the plague. God can deliver. God can heal. God can set you free. God can turn this nation around. He can turn your nation around. God knows how to flip the script. What a mighty God we serve. Choose you this day. Whom shall we serve? As for me and my house, Jackie and I, we will serve the Lord. As for us, we will serve the Lord. And I pray that you'll make that same decision. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Call upon him while there's still time. This world is being destroyed, but Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. If you're not saved, get saved today. How do I get saved, Pastor? By confessing your sins to Jesus and believing that he died on the cross for your sins, that God raised him from the dead, and asked Jesus Christ to come into your life. Or if you're in a backslidden condition, and you know that you know, you're backslidden. Repent. Tell God you're sorry. Get back up where you belong. Get back up where you belong. Just make a decision. I'm through with this. I'm out of this. I'm out of drugs. I'm out of alcohol. I'm out of this uh, adulterous relationship. I'm out of here. I'm going to trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that makes the Lord his trust and respects not the proud, no such as turn aside to lies. Father God, we thank you, and we bless you, and we praise you, and we honor you. Thank you for this mighty sermon. Thank you for this anointing, God. Thank you for your presence in the hearts of the people. Lord, do wonders. Let signs and wonders accompany this word, God. Show yourself powerful on the behalf of your people, and we thank you, Lord, for we choose in this nation we choose in other nations to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Father, that you raised him from the dead. He said, all powers in my hand. Behold, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for entrusting us with the keys. So we use our keys of worship, praise, studying the word, and trusting you. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to stop our we're going to stop our recording right now. If you have any questions, give me a call. Praise God. Let's talk this thing over. Let's pray together. Let's worship and fellowship.